Millions of years ago, there were seas and oceans where deserts are today. What if it all comes back? Water instead of sand, where deserts used to be. Life on the planet would change completely. Sand can act like a liquid if a strong enough airflow makes it rise from below. The air reduces friction between sand particles, making more space. The particles begin to move freely, as if they're in a liquid. If a huge vent suddenly opened under the Earth's crust, blowing air from beneath, then perhaps the entire landscape would begin to sink like being in quicksand. Such monuments as the Egyptian pyramids or the Sphinx would sink under the ground. Huge cities built on sand would disappear. The Sahara Desert would resemble one bubbling cauldron. Camel caravans would simply fall down. But don't worry, the animals wouldn't get hurt. Liquid sand is filled with oxygen, so they'd be able to swim in it. But what if sand turned into water instead of just a liquid version of itself? If this happened quickly and unexpectedly, then disasters would occur on all the beaches of the world. Imagine you're sunbathing on an air mattress on a sandy beach of a seaside resort. You're wearing sunglasses, the sea waves are tickling your heels, gulls are squawking overhead, and you have iced tea in your hands. A perfect holiday. But then, you feel your mattress moving, a wave hits you, you take off your glasses and find yourself in the middle of the sea. The entire beach has turned into water. It reaches way up to the road where cars drive and houses stand. You help people who were sunbathing nearby to climb on the mattress. You swim to the new shore, head home, turn on the TV, and see this is happening all over the world. Hundreds of thousands of beaches are flooded. Water overflows city streets and houses. People are scared. Some leave their homes, while others take surfboards and ride the waves. And while part of the world is trying to cope with a global flood of sandy shores, a fifth ocean is being formed at the same time. You get on a plane and fly over the largest sandy desert on the planet. The area of the Sahara Desert is 3.5 million square miles. This is almost the area of the entire USA. Billions of tons of sand turned into water in an instant. And all this water starts to spill over. Animals living in the sand, such as jerboa, scorpions, cobras, and many others, disappear from the face of the planet. The nearest countries are devastated by the flood. The new ocean connects to the Mediterranean, Red, and Tyrrhenian seas. The water level in the world's oceans is rising so much that most island countries have to evacuate to continents. In coastal cities, People sit in cafes and enjoy life. Some are sunbathing, while others try to escape from the heat and the shade. Suddenly, the wind rises and a shadow appears on the ground. People look at it, puzzled, and it keeps growing. Everyone looks up and sees that a huge tsunami is approaching the shore. Desert countries have it even worse. They're flooded at once and turn into many small divided islands and huge waves will hit the shores of port towns for a long time. The hottest places on the planet have become wet. Hot sands turned into almost boiling water. It quickly evaporates and forms huge rain clouds. Thanks to high humidity, the air pressure changes and strong winds begin to blow. They drive clouds all over the planet. Long rains begin all over the world, drenching everything. Water mixes with the world's oceans and cools down. The hottest places in the world are getting colder. With temperatures changing, tornadoes and hurricanes form in different parts of the world and ravage the planet. The face of the whole Earth is warping. New seas, lakes, and rivers form all over the world. Before, water comprised 70% of the planet's surface. Now, it's 90%. Fortunately, Cataclysms don't last long. Even though sands cover a lot of land, they're not very thick. The depth of the ocean is hundreds of times deeper than the depth of sand in a desert. In some, the sand is only a few inches thick. Only the largest dunes may reach 150 feet in thickness. The water levels will rise drastically and will probably never return to what they used to be. But at least the weather will calm down sooner or later. But something bad is still going to happen. Every year, 2 billion tons of dust rise into the air. Most of it comes from deserts. Particles of this dust contain useful elements and bacteria. 
the wind carries them all over the planet. A quarter of this dust comes to rest in seas and oceans. Bacteria and nutrients feed small creatures in the ocean, such as phytoplankton or krill. These creatures, in their turn, are food for small fish and even whales. And the fish are food for predators, as well as for many land animals. So, if sands turn into water, the ocean will lose a lot of its nutrients. The good news is that it won't last long either. Nutrients and bacteria will adapt to the new conditions and will be able to evaporate with water, which condenses into rain clouds. The largest variety of the marine world lives in shallow waters not far from the coast. The desert turned into water gives ideal conditions for new life to develop. New species of animals appear that can survive in hot water. Many creatures that lived in hot sands have now adapted to marine life. Camels have learned to swim, and small reptiles can hold their breath underwater for a long time. Thanks to hot weather and shallowness, a huge amount of seaweed grows on the bottom that can withstand high temperatures. The new ocean now resembles a multicolored garden of marine plants. People are also trying to adapt. They build towns on massive wooden structures right on the water and attach them to the bottom with long chains. Fishing has become the main source of food for all humankind. Cars have become obsolete. Everyone wants boats. Famous expensive car brands now design luxury yachts and ships. Also, everyone learns to swim, and every resident of sea cities is an excellent swimmer. All the new water was fresh until it mixed with the sea and gained its saltiness. People have created special filters that turn this water fresh. Global stocks are increasing. There are almost no places left in the world where people don't have enough water. But what if our situation became stranger still? And all the sand on the planet, not only on beaches and in deserts, turned into liquid. All hourglasses in the world would accelerate because the water flows much faster than sand. Sand is also used for all types of construction works. They use it in the production of concrete and to lay a strong foundation. It would be impossible to create bricks and clay without sand. Almost all houses, not counting wooden ones, would simply fall apart. But. Wooden houses could just rot because of the high humidity levels. Sand is used for glass. Production of mirrors, windows, and light bulbs would be greatly reduced. World reserves of drinking water would decrease as sand is a natural filter for purification. There would be huge traffic jams on the roads because, well, there would be no roads to speak of. Imagine you're driving a car and its wheels turn into jelly. Road vehicles would be severely affected. Planes would also stop flying because sand is used in the construction of the runway. The only means of transportation left would be ships. Sand is present almost everywhere on our planet, so the water would begin to moisten and wash away the soil. The whole world would turn into a vicious marsh, and it would be very difficult to move around. The humidity levels would increase significantly, and thick fogs would appear every day. A huge number of scolopendras, salamanders, frogs, and other creatures that love humidity would take over the planet. Some insects may evolve and increase in size thanks to the new ideal conditions. And people, if they survive at all, might grow scales to better transfer moisture. The Earth would look like a planet from a sci-fi movie. But fortunately, this isn't going to ever happen. <laughs>